what arguments were raised to support the theory that Hitler sent his deputy Rudolf Hess on a peace mission to England? Yeah, Rudolf Hess is a deputy, and he suddenly, without any warning at all, uh, he was a trained, experienced uh, pilot, and he took a specially converted uh, fighter plane, heavy fighter plane, from uh, Germany to Scotland uh, on the 10th of May, 1941. So not long before the German invasion of the Soviet Union, Operation Barbarossa. He landed in Scotland and he was looking for the Duke of Hamilton, uh, who was the head of an Anglo-German friendship uh, organization, not a pro-Nazi uh, at all, a, a respectable one. There was a less respectable, more pro-Nazi one with a different name. So, um, uh, Hess mistook the Duke of Hamilton, who had a fancy title but had no real political influence, for somebody really important. He mistook this Anglo-German society as uh, a, a significant, for a significant organization, which it was not. Uh, and he brought nothing written with him, but he said, I've got an important message. Uh, Hitler wants peace. Um, We'll, uh, if you let us, the Nazis, if you let us take over Europe, then we'll let you, the British, have your empire, overseas empire, which at the time was a very widespread one across the world in Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, the Far East, and so on. So, um, of course, Churchill, as Prime Minister in 1941, did not believe him. And rightly, Churchill poured scorn on any so-called peace offer from Hitler. After all, if you look at the treaties and deals Hitler had signed, he'd broken every one of them. He'd signed a treaty with, the, with, with uh, Poland in 1934, invaded Poland in 1939. He signed a treaty with Russia, the Soviet Union in 1939, invaded it two years later. The Munich Agreement, uh, signed with Britain and France, uh, take German-speaking areas out of Czechoslovakia in 1938. He broke that within six months. So you couldn't, there's no way any, any sensible person could trust anything that Hitler offered. Uh, and um, now, this is not a chance event. It's another lone individual. The evidence from Germany from people who saw Hitler uh, go apeshit after he received a letter from Hess, from his uh, adjutant as Hess was in mid-flight. Before he took off, he sent his adjutant with this letter saying he was going off to, off to Scotland. Um, all the evidence is Hitler was absolutely shocked. He was even rather depressed about this. Um, because the, the, the only explanation was Hitler, that, that Hess was mad, or as we say in the UK, bonkers. And um, that didn't look good if the second in command for Hitler had been uh, now suddenly revealed as a madman. Uh, in fact, it was a joke. When Romans in Germany, people told jokes uh, to relieve the tension in Germany, as they do in dictatorships. And as Hitler he imagines Hess has brought for Churchill, and Churchill says, so you're a bad man. And Hess says, oh no, I'm only his deputy. So um, now again, the conspiracy theorist mentality that we looked at in the project I, I ran in Cambridge. Uh, so this can't be right. It's got to be a conspiracy. It's got to be masterminded by Hitler. And then the corollary of this is of course that um, the peace offer was genuine and it would have avoided all the horrors that came later. And as I said, nothing that Hitler had to offer would have been genuine, and there's no evidence that he even knew about it before he got the, the letter. But in, in Britain in particular, uh, there have been some right-wing conspiracy theorists who very persistently have tried to suggest that uh, Hess was uh, sent by Hitler with a genuine, um, a genuine offer. Uh, as I said, there's no evidence of this, and all you have to do is look at the the German evidence uh, to see that this is not true.